<laughs> about what my agenda was for your life. Because I really didn't think I should have gotten cancer. You know, I really didn't. Because I knew a whole bunch of wicked folk that didn't have cancer. <laughs> I know a whole bunch of false preachers that didn't have cancer. I'm like, well, I'm dealing with cancer, you know. And, uh, but God in his history has never checked with man and said, is this okay? I'll put this in your life. I mean, for what he did with Paul, he put something on Paul. Paul said, I prayed three times. Well, take this thing away. Take this thing away from me, Lord. Paul. I said, no. Don't ask me about this. My grace is sufficient. I got a purpose in, in what I'm doing with you. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just amazing how, how God handles and knows what you need and knows how to keep your feet grounded and knows how to make your life work. Stuff you think is heavy and low, God knows that's what it's going to take to make you useful, to make it what he wants you to be. And so I can go, I can go and tell people, you know, I see, you know, you get, got cancer. Yeah, I mean, God, but God is, God's not a respected person. He can bring you out of it. He can take you through it. And it ain't about what you think you deserve. <laughs> I don't deserve it. It's about God, have your way. Thank you, Lord. I sent a song. Uh, and, and I wish I wish we would go to the YouTube. Um, I don't know if it's uploaded or not. There's Thank You, Lord. Maybe I get your line to play it on there. The, uh, but we sang Thank You, Lord, last Sunday. And uh, I think we don't really sing. Now, last Sunday, we sang it. But I don't, I don't think we really understand how to sing that song. You got to be thanking the Lord for the, what you thought was the good and what you thought was the bad. <laughs> when I got my heart broken, I thought that was bad. Oh, I was head over heels in love. And my, she broke my heart, Joe. She broke my heart. I mean, my roommate said, man, I don't even recognize you. <laughs> I mean, I was on the floor hurt. And uh, I was like, he like, man, I ain't never seen you like this. She broke my heart. I mean, I, I, if she'd have told me to walk from Norman to Edmond where she lived in the rain and I'll marry you, I would have walked in the rain singing all the way. <laughs> I'd, I'd have been singing. God, I just, I'd have walked. Thought I was in love. Broke my heart. So when, when it finally got so bad, my friends said, dude, you can't go on like this, you know. You know, you, you just, you, I don't even recognize you. So they told me to break up with her. They told me. They said, Bobby, you're not yourself. What's wrong with you? I know you need it. So, so I'm like, man, I can't. You say, you, your dignity is at stake, dude. You, you know, you can't carry on like this. And a preacher friend of mine was a, one of the finest ministers. I had friends telling me, you can't carry on like this. You can't do that. You, you're not yourself. You, you're smitten. This ain't right. This ain't of God. And I was clinging to that thing. Uh, <laughs> any way she wanted to do, I was good with it, as long as I was connected with her. So when the preacher talked to me and told me, hey, go ahead and break that off, he was the last one. You weren't in my life. You, you wouldn't even stood for it. You know, you, you, out of the day one, John would say, no, Street, uh-uh, I'll do it, you know. <laughs> John went in my life. John would let this happen. But I called her up and let her know I was breaking it off. And she just kind of like, what? I said, yeah, I'm not going to call you anymore. I'm not going to chase after you. I said, uh, I'm just not going to do it. She laughed because she knew how crazy I was about her. She like, she was like, oh, he'll be calling next. So I didn't call. And then I started recovering. And uh, eventually she called me back. But by that time I got in strength, I thought it wasn't of God and found out I really wasn't in love. And I, and I said, Lord, I thank you. So what I thought was bad, I thought, you know, heartbreak was, you know, not being able to close the deal on her was, was the most devastating thing in my life. Turned out to be God, turned out to be the best thing. But it took time. And then, of course, when I ran into grace, God, I thank you for not letting me have my way. Not answering the prayer that I married that girl. Not answering the prayer that it work out. I thank you for that heartbreak. Because baby, look at me now. <laughs> and, I, and, I always, and I always knew, I told you I knew it was love, not grace, because I wouldn't have taken a bullet for that girl. As crazy as I was about it. Somebody tried to shoot, I wouldn't have jumped in the way. <laughs> I would have been devastated. Oh, God, they shot my girlfriend. Somebody give me counseling. Right in front of me. Somebody give me, somebody give me therapy. They shot that girl right in front of me, man. He just walked up and went kaboom. Somebody help me, you know, get me grief counseling. But with Grace, I'd have been like this, dude. She's about to shoot this lady. Oh, I got the gun. 
I would put my life on the line so quick with her, and I, and I have never felt that for anybody that ever dated. And so what I thought was bad, that heartbreak and dealing with that girl and praying, God, help me close this deal so I can marry this girl. God, you know this is what I want. All that honest, I thought that was bad, but it was good. So when we say, thank you, Lord, but it took time, it took time to reveal that thing. Some of the things you think are, are so bad now, in time you're going to say, man, that was good. God was delivering me from that situation. God was delivering me from that job. God was delivering me from that situation. I was in a, a situation where my boss was being a bully and uh, was being mean. And I was saying for deliverance, God moved me to another division, moving somebody else. You know, I, you know, when you're a believer, you can't just go do stuff. Somebody gives you trouble on God, job. That doesn't mean you're just supposed to go change it. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to preach this morning. We might, I'm going to preach. Okay. Because y'all are not saying amen quick enough. <laughs> so I'm going to preach. <laughs> I want to teach, but y'all can make me preach. <laughs> when you're a servant, you don't set your own agenda. Your steps have been ordered by God. And even if you in quote unquote the wrong place, God allows you to get there. And you can't just go willy nilly up and change because God may be saying, why are you there? Since you made this decision, here's what I'm going to do while you're there. God might be in the middle of working something out where your light is shining. Your boss is treating you bad, but she's watching you in that job. And God needs you to stay put until her soul gets delivered. Then you can leave. It ain't your call. See, the world changes jobs when they want to. I'm, okay, I'm feeling some amens now. Thank the Lord. They, they don't ask God, should I leave this job? What they do is say, he mistreated me, so I'm gone. But the child of God says, Lord, I need to change. What do you authorize? God might say, stay there. So when my turn came up and I was dealing with the bully, I had a fantastic offer. I was going to move up to the same level as my mean boss. And I wanted to walk in with my coffee as his peer. <laughs> it was perfect. Instead of being in Dallas, I was going to only have to go to Tulsa. Oh, I was going to go to Dallas, though, and hang out. <laughs> Get me a desk down there and say, yeah, I'm just down here. My team is in the, uh, my team is going to be remote, but I'm down here. I was going to make sure I ran to my boss having my coffee. And let them know how God had exhausted me. It was perfect. It was more money, higher position. And it was 90 miles, 200 miles away. I didn't have to travel so much. When I prayed about God told me no. I didn't understand it. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's so, it's so perfect. This is so perfect. So I, just, I stayed under that bully. And within six months of me turning that job down, they eliminated that division and told everybody they didn't have a job. Everybody took that promotion, was gone. And I ran to one who was off me, said, yeah, they just, they just cut us loose with no notice and told us we either got to move to New York or lose our job. What I thought was the best thing for my life, God knew six months from now, this is going to happen, so I'm keeping from it now. So we don't really nearly jump up and do things. We ask God, what's your plan in this? Can I give you another example? I'm sorry. We'll, we'll get, we're going to teach next Sunday. <laughs> Can I give you another example? <laughs> when I was in Denton, Texas, my daughter came to me. And sometimes your children come, and she was probably um, six or seven. I always I hate to mention her name, but she's probably six or seven. I always hope we lived in seven. She doesn't understand what she said to me. She came to me. And said, don't run and don't pray. Seven years. Then she went on about playing with her dolls and what she was doing. She said, don't run and don't pray. I knew that was the Lord speaking to me, even though she didn't know it. Don't run and don't pray. Said, don't, don't run, don't pray. That's a strange word. So I started praying about that word. I said, okay, God, I know she doesn't know it, but I know you're speaking to me. So later, we were at the house and it started storming. Well, the sirens went off. We had a tornado warning. And I was sitting with some company. And, 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 we, and we heard the warning. We heard the wind, the rain, and, and, you know, Texas tornadoes, you don't play with them. But I already had a word. Don't even pray about this. Don't run. Don't go seek shelter. 
and don't even pray. I got this. So we were sitting there playing a game, and somebody needed to see the faith. And, and, and I, I said, I said, we're good. God already got this covered. We didn't even have to pray because God was letting me know I already got it covered. Don't, don't, don't like, stop everybody and gather and start. I got, don't, don't run and don't pray. I got this. So my steps and your steps are ordered. This is kind of God. We say, he looks well beyond today. Pastor Dale taught a wonderful lesson uh, Thursday. And he touched on something that, that I love to talk about. If God were a man, we would say he has trouble with tenses. T-E-N-S-E-S. -E past tense, present tense, and future tense. We would say if he were a man, God needs understanding about tenses. You don't say, tomorrow I was at the store. I say, well, 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 well minister, you're going to say tomorrow I will be at the store. Right? Mm -hmm. That's future tense. I say, you don't talk about the future as if it's the past because you don't know what's going to happen. So if God were a man, we would say he has trouble with tenses. But God is not a man. So when you read the Bible, you say, God, well, this don't make no sense because you're talking about the future as if it was past. In Joshua 10, they get ready to fight a big army. The army is armed with swords, they have horses, they have spears. And God says, I've delivered them into your hands. Go. Lord, they don't look like they've been delivered in my hands. They own horses with spears, they charge, they wreck in the city. They were destroying Gilgal, and God says, I've delivered them your hands. Go take the city. They come up over here, and these guys are all on horses. They don't know that the Lord, been, they don't look like that they know it. Lord, did you tell them they've been delivered? They still on their horses. God says, I, he didn't say, I will deliver. I have delivered, because God sees the future, and he feels like Nobody can change what he plans to do. I like it when Michael Jordan has a ball in his hands and he's going to go. He'd be like, nobody can. I'm, I'm trying to stop me. I'm going in. I'm dunking and nobody can stop me. He's a man. And it's happened. Most of the time he's successful, right? Right, John? <laughs> we have a goat debate, LeBron versus Jordan. So that's just. Right, John? <laughs> so, the goalie I used example last week when my boys were losing the, the soccer game and the goalie was three to two and 10 seconds left. And he left the goal, took the ball in his own hands. And then he said, ain't nobody gonna stop me. He drove all the way down past the guy, made a goal, but nobody could stop him. But God, even more so, he feels like, I'm gonna call it like it's the past because I don't feel like nobody can stop me. So he says, I have delivered them. And the land that the pastor they're preaching about, Erzy, he told them, even though people were sitting in their houses cooking their dinner, God says, everywhere you shall tread, that's future tense for you. He says, I have given. That's past tense. I've already given you it. Wait a minute, Lord, they're still in it. <laughs> I have given it. Well, Lord, how you done gave it? And that's, that, that, the tenses don't match. Well, it turns out the Bible said God calls those things to be not as though they were. No, I can stop him. So we have to recognize our steps are ordered. And we have to recognize that we still don't get how, how cold God is, how, you know, God is cold. <laughs> you can't deal with him, you know. <laughs> he, just, he just speaks and it is. You know, it, it, it just happens, you know. No, nobody can, I mean, he's just on a whole another other level beyond top. He, he God. He calls those things to be not as though they were, and he raised the dead. You know, if you tired of you being dead, he just raises you. <laughs> Lazarus died. <laughs> He's the one back alive. Lazarus! Death had to let him go. This God we serve raised the dead and called things that be not as though they were. So what did, what did God say about that? That's the question. So when we pray, we don't operate our own agenda. We want to know what God said about it. When they told me I lost my job, I know I'm preaching. We're going to teach next Sunday. Y'all stay with me. I lost my job and told me to pack, they told me to pack my stuff up. And at the time, I really need that job. You know, it was a nice contract. Um, but I said, okay, Lord, pack my stuff up. They said, you're out of funds. We're out of funds here. Pack my stuff up, took it home, cleaned my desk, because I don't want to make a big scene on my last day. You know how y'all do, right? You come over and stare at people when they leave. What happened? 
you get fired, you can quit. You know, that, all that stuff. I didn't want all that. So I packed my stuff up in the middle of the night, took it home. All I had was one little thing I had to take off my desk. And now I'm done. I'm going to make my exit quietly. Told me this is such and such your last day. Went home and prayed about it. And so I took half my stuff box at home. I prayed about it. <laughs> they told me I was out of funding. My boss, the people ran the money, and the people ran the money's boss. You got no, no job, no job. I, I'm good. I'm the Lord going to do something. Got home, prayed about it. The Lord told me to go back. Say, that's my job. Said uh, that, uh, that the people that came against me, said I wasn't going to see them anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Get God a hand, praise a family. My, that's my honor today. <laughs> the Lord told me that came against me. The ones came in, I don't see them anymore. So I took my box back to work that next day and started unpacking it in front of all my coworkers because I knew what the Lord had said. I knew what he said. I knew what the Lord said. I wasn't guessing. I knew what the Lord told me because I wasn't trying to clean the job. I'd already given up, but the Lord told me I still had it. Started unpacking, and sure enough, the pre people that was going to take my fun in the way got eliminated. One got fired. For this or that, the other got cut off. And I looked for him on my little instant message system at work. I looked for him and I couldn't find him. I didn't see him no more. Just like the Lord told me. He told me I wasn't going to see him no more. I saw him no more physically, literally, saw him no more. Names gone from the system. No email address, no I am nothing. Gone. One got fired and one let go. And God's child was at his desk. God is good. So I was <laughs> but God. I don't, I don't remember being sad. I don't remember saying I remember, I remember being like, you know, what am I gonna do? I got a fan feed, but God is gonna do that. I didn't even get the doubt of God. You and I said, Lord, what's next? I was standing there like God got God got something good for me. And oh, sad they were gone. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm that mature of a believer. I don't know if I'm that mature of a believer to have been sad. I don't know. I don't know. Pray for me. I don't, I don't know if I was sad about them going or not. I think I was just rejoicing. Uh, pray for me. I need, I need to come up. I'm, I was more like David. Lord, let me see it. But, uh, but anyway, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no. But, but, but the way they did it, the way they did it was kind of bad, you know. I didn't give all the details, but the way that one woman did it, she was in, tried to lie on me and, um, and was called, it was, was called some things that, <laughs> that, that be not as though they were. She was, <laughs> she was straight up lying. And uh, so I, I, I really was like, Lord told me I wasn't going to see him, but they my enemy. So I rejoiced. But my point is this, um, what you think, God, God is, is, is not bound by tenses, but they fired me. <laughs> they fired me. <laughs> but God says, I have given you that job. <laughs> this is, they fired me, but God told me, that's still your job. Lord, they, they fired me. <laughs> that's the present, you know, the, 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 that, that's happened. I pray about it. God says, I've given you that job. That's backwards. You know? Usually God gives you a job, and then you might get fired. In this case, they fired me, and God says, I've given you that job. <laughs> so I took myself back to my job I've been fired from because God had given it to me. But in their minds, I was still fired. But it turns out their minds didn't count anymore because they had been let go. So God doesn't deal in tenses. So it doesn't matter what happened in the past. 
God may look beyond all that and say, okay, I see victory for you. Sometimes it's if. Sometimes it's an if. If you be willing and obedient, I see victory for you. And so you just stay on that path. Don't go, this, this ain't working out, God. I know you, I, I, maybe I heard the Lord wrong. When I, I mean, just, just kind of, When God has given you an assignment, given you purpose, you've heard the Lord clearly. What you doing turning around the first sign of trouble, first sign of giants, and the first sign and we look like grasshoppers, this is too big for even God. What 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 did what did what did Mary tell Jesus when 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 Lazarus had died? Yeah, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have been dead. We didn't have his funeral, he'd been dead three days now. Lord, if you've been here, it's kind of accusatory, wasn't it? If, you, you, if you'd have got here on time, that's what it was. Lord, if you got here on time, my brother wouldn't be wouldn't be dead. What? Now, now, can you imagine she wanted, to, she wanted to hit Jesus with the emotional impact of that? If you got here on time, my brother wouldn't be dead. See, see, yes, yeah, she, she's hitting Jesus with some emotional. You see there? She's throwing an emotional grade, grenade at Jesus. How would you feel if you showed up and you were a doctor and said, you know, if you've been here, man, she wouldn't have died. If you'd got here on time, if you got when we asked you to, she tried to hit Jesus with that, but she didn't realize how cold God is. Jesus is God in the flesh. And you tell me about somebody that died. Hmm. And I'm God in the flesh. And I made this stuff, spoken existence. And this ain't the first time I raised people from the dead. That's what I do. And after they die, I raise them up. And call them in the, in the question about what went on in, this, in, in the brief time I gave him. I created time and I'm going to end it. And, you, and if I'd have been here, your brother wouldn't have died. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. You still don't get it. Hmm. Okay, where you lay his body? Now, wait a minute, Lord. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. It's been three days. Body's decomposed. I know you Jesus and all. I know you got faith and all. I know you be that Bible and all. I know you think God, God is going to do something and all. I know you be that Bible. I know you be that, I know you into that faith stuff and all. But this case here, let's just deal with reality. He didn't decompose. He stinks by now. We can't, we, we'll pass out, open that stuff up. I know you Jesus and all, but this is beyond where you are. And I, 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 even though the scripture doesn't, doesn't, doesn't put it this way, I like to put it this way. I, I, in my mind, I, 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 this ain't Bible. This is Bobby. I, I hear Jesus saying, I ain't asked y'all that. I ain't asked y'all that. I ain't asked y'all that. He, he stinks, but I ain't asked y'all that. I, I said, where well, you lay his body? You know, <laughs> that, that's, that's Bobby. He said, where well, you lay his body? Lord, Lord, he stinks by now. This, this is beyond, you okay. You know, you, you Jesus and all, but it's been three days. His body, he stinks. His body decomposed. We don't open up and see all that. Oh. And my mind, he Jesus, where did you lay his body? Beyond. Well, Lord, now, and, and these things tells her, tells her, do you believe your brother will live again? Well, Lord, I know he'll live again at the last. You ain't got to open this tomb and stink us all up. I know he'll live again at the last day at the resurrection. <laughs> and Jesus, being God, said, I am the resurrection. <laughs> I am the resurrection. And I am the life. The clearest expression in Scripture, one of the clearest expressions, is that Jesus was God. I am the resurrection. He didn't say God is the resurrection. God, he said, I am the rest. I am the light. Show me where you laid his body. He already knew. He wanted her to participate in what he was going to do. He went to the tomb. And before going there, he said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Why? Because you're past some death in the life. And whosoever believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Where did you can lay his body? He went up to the tomb. And I love how Jesus morphs from man to God. He was fully human and fully divine. The Bible says when Lazarus was dead, that was his friend. Praise the Lord. 
He wept. He wept over that. He wept. That's one of the two times in the we find Jesus weeping. As a man, he wept over his friend's death. He felt that. But as God, he wiped away the tears, walked up to the tomb, and spoke to death. He no less than demanded that death release Lazarus. Lazarus come forth, and he that was dead, past tense, came forth. And Jesus said, now loose him, take those grave clothes off, and let him go. This God you serve, when people give up on you and wrap you, and you done, put the grave clothes on you, bury you through, it's over. This God, loose him. Let him go. I am the rest. I am the life. I love how God put it in Isaiah. Beside me, there is no God. I, even I am the Lord. I'll declare the thing. This is how it's going to be in this house. Beside me, there is no Savior. Who shall you compare me to? I, even I am the Lord. And so when we say our steps are ordered, and we don't make independent decisions because we're servants, it's a privilege. Because the decision is being made by somebody with more intelligence, understanding, power, insight, anyone than I. I thank God that I'm not independent. You got to pray about that? Oh, bro, come on. No. Oh, what, even the Proverbs, it says, <laughs> you seek counsel from wise men. It says, if you don't seek counsel, you're a fool. So I got why, people wise now. You, you think when I, when I want to deal with money, somebody called me, a pastor, one asked me about money. I said, I don't know about money. I said, talk to Pastor Daryl. I said, I don't know how to manage, but I don't know where to put money to make it do right. I don't, I don't have the wisdom in that. I said, I, I said, I said, I'm, I said I'm, a little, I'm a little embarrassed because you're looking up to me at this age thinking I, I should know about money. And I said, I, I really don't understand the markets. And I don't know what they're doing at that ring and bell. People rushing. I have no idea what that's going on. I look like Martin, they rushing and yelling. I, I have no clue. I don't know the difference between that and OU gang with people yelling. I have no difference. You got, what they doing? No clue. Even today when I watch, I said, what are those folks doing yelling and screaming and raising bells? So I said to Pastor Dale, why? Because I seek wise counsel. And Pastor Dale can say, you know, this and that and this and that. And, but there are areas where I can't counsel in. I say, okay, I can talk about that because I understand that area, right? So how much more should we go to God with decisions when he wants to hear from us anyway? Peter said, cast all your cares on him. Well, he cares about you. Well, if you care about it, God cares about it. God cares where you put your shop. God cares what kind of color your car is. God cares about your cloth interior versus leather because you care about it. You're his child. We think the little things don't belong to God. But Paul, Peter said, cast all your cares. Well, he cares about you. The little things that bother you. If you bother, God is bothered. If my child is bothered, where's my child? Where, where's, uh, where's my daughter? If my child is bothered, about the length of her hair and she's really concerned i just want my hair and she's she's upset about it and, and i know she shouldn't be upset about it because no big deal do you think i as a father am not concerned on some level and want to be involved in making that thing work in her life and making her at peace the little stuff that you quote unquote too ashamed to ring god about and blah 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 he knows you're concerned cast all your cares and ask him God, what should I do in this situation? You can pray about anything your father wants to hear from you about that stuff. He's got people who won't even talk to him about who they marry, what state they live in, what to do next in, in, in this big, I got a thousand offers, I, I can go to college anywhere. People don't even pray about that. They oh, I'm going to go this one's I believe. And yet somewhere in the process, that believer that's saying, God, I don't know which one it is, I can go to Harvard, I can go to Yale, but where do you want me to go? God might say, Iowa State. Iowa State. You go to Iowa State, oh, I guess the Lord might just, I don't know what the Lord's doing in there's grace. Hey. <laughs> God, I just. Turned out the one he wanted me with was a cyclone. If I went to Harvard, I'd have met Jeanette. And we would have been through after two years. Give God a hand of praise. Y'all ain't liking this. <laughs> all right. All right. It's, it's 11.20. All right, we got to stop. I never get, but I told you, the way, way we started, it was, I told you I was going to preach today. And I did I not warn you. So, uh, so.
We didn't teach today, but we did preach, but that was what God ordained today. So it's 1120. <laughs> so, um, so, so God, what we do next, next, um, um, and, and, and there's a reason, uh, you know, what, what's funny, can I, can I share this? I know Pastor Daryl won't mind. When Pastor Daryl came, he flew into town on business this week when we weren't expecting him. I said, oh, great, great, great. And put Pastor Daryl, you know, because Pastor Daryl comes down, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't let, you know, that's like, that's like seeing Michael Jordan suit up for your basketball game. And and he said, oh, and he's like like somebody sitting out. <laughs> Michael going in, you know. And uh, and uh, but anyway, so so I said, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I said, I said, oh, CJ, we got youth Sunday because that's why we dressed like this youth Sunday. You know, we dressed down. I said, I said, oh, I can let him take my Sunday school class. And Lord said, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, I was like so I, I pray I'm supposed to say something, but I tried the Lord three times on that because I was I was like, that's a Daryl, you know, he's here down, you know, you know, he's not here all the time. And but something, so I say that to say this. So I said, okay, I got to keep this, uh, keep this assignment because I don't know what's going on. And he preached uh, last time. He said, keep your assignment. I said, okay, okay. So I would be doing, I'm, do, I'm asking you to do what I want to do or what I feel the Lord's leading me to do. Okay, so I said, okay, I'm just going to keep it and see what happens. So what I want to say is this. Somewhere in this lesson today was a word for somebody. I can promise you that. I don't know which part of it was for who, but I can assure you that God wanted this particular message and those particular examples or whatever, I don't know which, but he wanted this word forward. And I pray as we stand, you ready to close out in prayer? As we stand. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Right, 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 right. So it is some. <laughs> right, right. Right, right. Amen. 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 So we just thank God for goodness and mercy. Thank God for our Zoomers. Hope y'all caught the entirety of that. And we're gonna we're gonna play out uh, today. Um, Pastor John, did you? We always ask our pastor to have any input. Pastor Earl, okay. Pass my friend, my, my friend, Pastor Dave. God bless. Okay, right. And uh, in, in case I'm going to draft you, Haley, would you pray us out in prayer? Did y'all want to give Haley any special? I know we're going to pray in a minute, but did anybody else want to give Haley any special request before we pray? Very. She's in the hospital, right? You said, yeah. Okay. Pastor Johnny, yeah. Okay.
Amen. Amen. So, uh, 